Ian Roberts started training in Shotokan Karate at the age of 13 at the St. Helens Karate Club with senior KUGB instructor Glenn Haslam. Now, some 34 years later, Ian is still as committed to the art of Shotokan as he was all those years ago. His competition history is hugely impressive and he is admired and respected by his fellow KUGB squad members as well as other long-standing members of the Karate Union of Great Britain. Well, when did I first meet Ian? Uh, w I guess it would have been in the late 70s as Ian was coming out of the junior squad into the senior squad uh, around about the time of the Munich um, European Championships and uh, we became friendly around that time and uh, I guess our relationship has grown since then. Well, I've been in preparation for this interview trying to think of some nice things to say about Ian. Well, the first thing I thought was he's English, so uh, I guess that doesn't count, but he's been a tremendous friend to me, Ian. Um, we, uh, we've had some great fun in the dojo and also outside the dojo. Um, Ian was uh, best man at my wedding eight, eight years ago, a great honour for me. He wore a kilt, which uh, was certainly a sight worth seeing. But I suppose more than that, um, at one point in time I, 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 was, I had quite a low personal experience uh, during the time I was living in St. Helens, and Ian was a real friend. And it's at, the, it's at these times when, when you have a low that you find out who your friends really are. Ian and his lovely wife Julie were absolutely rocks for me when I needed them. His early years in karate were not overly impressive. In fact, he considered himself a very poor seventh cue. Nevertheless, he persevered, and thanks largely to first-class instruction from Andy Sherry, Ian's interest in the art was created. Actions speak louder than words, so the saying goes. And in Ian's case, no other words could be more appropriate. This video puts Ian Roberts in the spotlight. Well, I started when I was about 13, and uh, probably in the Bruce Lee era, era when I started, you know. Everybody was getting into karate because of the Bruce Lee films. And um, the St. Helens Karate Club was quite big in St. Helens at the time. And Glenn Aslan was running it then, um, and he just won the European Championships, so it was, you know, quite popular. And uh, everybody who wanted to do karate kind of went to the, you know, and they, they started a beginner's course. And um, yeah, my dad was on about joining, but he never got round to it. He just decided to uh, send me down the, you know, feel it out. Uh, we had. Um, Andy Sherry down teaching and Andy Sherry brought Frank Brennan down with him and um, I was about to yell a belt by this time I think, poor yellow belt and uh, we were watching Frank and it was absolutely fantastic and it, it, that was what really at first caught me interest more than any, more than the Bruce Lee films or anything and it was, Frank was about my age at the time as well which was, you know, you think, gosh he's only the same age as me and look at him you know, it was probably that, that more than anything else that uh, started me training properly. The, the training of the Red Triangle was the, was the most uh, awesome training <laughs> that, you'll ever, that you'll ever see. I don't know what it's like now because I haven't, uh, I've not been watching a squad training session for a long time now, but I should imagine it's still pretty, pretty hard. But in them days, you had, um, you had some really powerful people. <laughs> And they weren't, they weren't playing. They were, they were, we were going, we would go for each other properly, you know.
Oh, there was, there was yeah, there's the utmost respect for each other. I mean, how could, you couldn't not respect people like that anyway, you know. Um, but you don't make no doubts about it. When they when they sparred with each other, they would go they would go for each other properly. You know, it was um, it was all hard stuff. Massive, it was a massive part of my life. We used to train, uh, was train Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday morning, Sunday morning. <laughs> so it was quite a lot, you know, it was a lot of sessions a week. A plus, on top of all that, we had squad training. And um, the senior squad at the time, above us, they just did one senior squad training. But when we kind of moved up and took over from them, Andy made it a Andy made a rule that we, we all still attended junior squad training as well. And junior squad training was a lot out of the senior squad training. Um well, you've met Andy but he does a he does a mean session, you know. I think the the, comp the the competition that stands out more than any other for me is probably is probably not an international one anyway it was the uh, the nationals when i won it with the team that i fought for because i mean i was very fortunate at the time that i fought for a really a really good club team and we won everything that was going you know we won everything but we couldn't win the nationals and we tried for 15 years to win the nationals and um the last time we we, we entered as a team it was more or less the same team except for one person and that was after, that was we kept that team for 15 years and we won it and we won it in style because it was a we fought Ronnie Christopher's team in the final and he had a really strong team up that day I think he had about three internationals in his team we beat them we beat the Red Triangle in the semi-finals we beat a, a Welsh team which was four Welsh internationals before that and a couple of other hard fights before that that's probably the one that's probably sticks out to my mind more than any other competition, you know, because 15 years is a long time where to win something. Yeah, that was that was probably the uh, the highlight. Well, at the moment, um, I get most of the satisfaction from karate from te from teaching and um, seeing the students doing well. I've got a couple of students who've done well. I've got one of the girls who I taught actually won the world championships. A girl called Colette Glenn. Another one of his students came second in the World Championships, Steve Rooney. And uh, the moment I've got a couple of juniors, you know, who are doing well, hopefully they'll carry on and uh, be my next, be the next team for Saint Helens. You know, in Kumite, it's the people who I fought in the squad with. You know, they were all very and and there's there's when I say the squad, I don't just mean the the five people who, you know, who, who represent the, the country in the competition, because that them five people, they wouldn't be there without the squad behind them who trains with them. And there was a lot of good fighters on the squad who, who unfortunately never actually got to um, to fight in the competition, but they were on the squad, and that squad all trained together. But I think 
at the, the pinnacle of it was like you know the likes of Elwin and Frank and Ronnie Christopher, George Best, Gary Hartford, Randy Williams, Donald Campbell. You know, um, there's there's so many Ronnie Cannings, uh, and then there's the the ladies squad. There's you know just Karen Finlay. She was a really excellent fighter, loads of spirit. Only small, but loads of spirit, and she won. I can't. I think I lost track of how many competitions she won. Um, and then there was there was people from my club who, who were who got on the squad. There was girls, Colette Glynn and Paula White. They all did very very well, you know. But what I think when it comes to Kata, um, probably Frank and Gary Hartford. Uh, they were always the competing with each other for the first place at Crystal Palace year in year out. And, um, and they were always there representing us when we went away fighting in international competitions. Yeah, <laughs> that was the European Championships in Sunderland. And I know I know known Charlie for a long time. Uh, there's two brothers. And they were both very good fighters, both very strong. And uh, when he was one of the fighters that I was talking about before when he when he when he came in, he came in for real, you know, which they all did at the time, you know, especially the British fighters. He was fighting for the Welsh team, and um, I remember him rushing in. I blocked. I think he threw threw a double punch. I blocked his front hand and I punched Kazamazuki, and he ran straight onto it. It was really a really hard punch, but um, to give him his due, he never went down. He shook his head, went away, and I got the points. He could have easily gone down, and uh, I, I wouldn't have got the points. I would probably have been disqualified. It was quite a hard blow, but uh, thanks, Charlie. <laughs> I think the contact to the body should be full contact, like it always was. Um, but the people who are doing it, the athletes, the trained, the like boxers, you know, uh, the body contact should be full contact, as far as I'm concerned, and that's the way I always taught, and I, they always will. The contact to the face um, is a little bit different, but I don't think there should be. I don't think it should be no contact. If you burst somebody's nose, I don't necessarily think you should be disqualified for that. But you, there's got to be the referee's got to make a decision whether you are actually trying to pull the punch. You've caught it, but you're pulling it because the way that you, you're taught in karate, you're taught to throw punches that are going to do some damage. So if you throw a punch at someone and you don't try to pull it, then the person really should be going down. And that would make very short fights, you know. Uh, the fight's got to go in three minutes and it's scoring points. You should both shake hands and walk off at the end. Um, not one of you be carried off. But on the other hand, it, it can get to the point where you can throw your hand out, miss, and snap it back and the referee can be too quick to give you the point which wouldn't have done anything anyway you know i think it's a lot of it it's got to be with the discretion of the referee but i don't auto